Hey there, Sculpture Kids. Today we're going to talk about our next project, which is the paper mache mobile. Our inspiration for this project is the great Alexander Calder. He's an American sculptor who started becoming well known in the 1920s, who also invented the mobile. The idea of a mobile is now so in ingrained in the collective imagination that it's difficult to believe that there was a time when it did not exist. But before Calder, it didn't. In 1930, his sculpture evolved from the more figurative into more purely abstract. Intrigued by these newest works, he had the idea of setting them in motion. In 1931, his first mobile was born, an abstract tabletop sculpture whose movement was driven by a motor. Marcel Duchamp christened it a mobile, which means both motion and motive in French. Shortly afterwards, Calder developed the mobile as we understand it today, an object that moves on its own, propelled by air currents. And I'm going to have you watch and experience what Alexander Calder mobile is like if you were to be standing next to it. So here you can see Alexander called um, next to some of his sculptures and next to some of his mobiles. Um, what I love about Alexander Calder is how down to earth he was as a person. He actually is from Connecticut. He was born in Connecticut and then um, lived in upstate New York where he had a family and a farm and um, he was just a very playful, um, fun loving type of guy and I think you can see that through his artwork. Here are two other mobiles. The biggest thing to think about when looking at a mobile is that the viewer is actually moving around the sculpture just like you would with a normal sculpture that stands still however with a mobile it's also moving with you so as you move it moves and it's a really interesting and fun experience um, when you are looking at a mobile and that's something I want you to really remember about and think about when you're starting to create your own. The red um, that you're seeing in the mobile to the right is uh, deemed the Calder red um, he's very known for using this type of vibrant red in his sculptures and in his mobile. So I wanted to make sure to show you that as well. So you're going to be making your own mobile. You'll pick a theme. It can be a color, it could be a shape, or it could be a subject matter. Nature, sports, hobbies, interests, etc. I'm completely leaving the theme up to you. From there you're going to go ahead and really think about the experience for the viewer. When creating a mobile, you should be constantly thinking about how the viewer will interact with the work. What experience do you want to give them? Do you want to give them a sense of calm, a sense of uneasiness, a sense of curiosity, a sense of nostalgia? And how do you create this experience? If you want something that feels calm, what do you need to do in order to make the viewer feel that sense of calm? And it's through making sure you stick to your theme. So if you're thinking about, let's say, I want to use... Um, a certain color pattern or a certain color aesthetic so that it gives the sense of calm and I want to use shapes that are more fluid so they're not jagged so it's more of that again that idea or that feeling of um, calmness then that's how you'd go ahead and create your mobile so when you're starting to pick your theme 
also thinking about the experience of the viewer is really important. Materials available, so I'll be providing newspaper, cardboard, wire, acrylic paint, wooden dowels, string, and if you wanted to bring something from home that you want to use for your mobile, that's totally fine, but glitter is never allowed in my classroom. I am probably one of the only art teachers that you will meet who hates glitter. Like, it's awful. So don't bring that into my classroom. Um, the objects you create are going to be applied with paper mache so that they become more durable and capable of painting. So keep in mind that when you're going back to your theme, when you're thinking about maybe a shape or a subject matter, you are making these out of paper mache or out of newspaper and out of cardboard and things like that so that you can go ahead and apply paper mache to it and then you'll paint them. I want you to experiment and push your boundaries. So push the materials as far as they can go. Don't be afraid to see what happens if you quote unquote try this to the material. Making mistakes is part of the process. Keep in mind that you're working with gravity, so you want the mobile to balance and hang freely from the ceiling. You'll see in the 600s hallway that there are some mobiles um, on display. I would love to take those down and put yours up so that there's a new fresh scene in the 600s, but also it gives your, um, your peers and your teachers um, something new to look at. So we will be hanging these from the ceiling. Dimensions of timeline. So your mobile should be within seven by seven to 10 by 10. I like to give you guys an idea of um, the size of your mobile or the size of your sculpture in general to give you an idea of how big it should be. If it's a little smaller, like let's say like seven by six or a little larger, let's say even up to 12 by 12, that's totally fine. But I don't want you creating this itty bitty mobile that you can't even see from a distance. I do want you to kind of um, push that, that size requirement. Um, to even to the larger scale one possible. And again, keep in mind these will be hanging from the ceiling, so you want them to be um, put together so that they are above people or at least at eye level. You don't want to make something that's at someone's waist. That's not really the point of a mobile. Day one is today. We're doing introduction. You're going to be brainstorming and sketching ideas. And you're also going to make a list of the materials you're going to use. And when possible, you're actually going to start creating that mobile today the pieces, not the paper mache parts, just the pieces that you're going to eventually paper mache. Um, listing of the materials is really important because it gives you an idea of um, like a plan of what you're going to be using. Um, so make sure to don't skip that step. Day two, continue creating pieces that need it to be paper mache. Day three, you're going to finalize all your little pieces and you're going to begin paper mache. -ing. Um, day four is finalizing paper mache and applying gesso to the pieces that are dry. And we'll talk more about gesso when day four comes. And then days five and six, you're going to finalize gesso and your paint. You'll start assembling. And then at the end of day six, all of your projects should be hung in the 600s hallway. So you'll be installing them yourselves. You'll be photographing them and then submitting them to Google Classroom with a completed Google form rubric, just like you're going to be doing for your, um, your paper sculptures. All right, I'm super excited about this project. I am a huge fan of Alexander Calder and I love mobiles. I think they're fun and whimsy and um, there's so much you can do with them. So I'm really excited to see what you all come up with.